the first thing I want to talk about this is uh, like good for Gordon Hayward. Gordon Hayward wanted to leave, and he made it very clear today. That's the choice he made. He made uh, when he put out his uh, Players Tribune article. Um, and my first reaction, honestly, is just I'm really bummed about it. There's no, you know, there's no other way around it. This just sucks in every way. There's nothing about it that's good. Like, we lost a really good player today. He, uh, Gordon Hayward is has been a great player for us, a big part of our winning uh, in the playoffs, a big part of our winning 51 games last season. Um, he had a choice to stay here or leave, and he chose to leave. And it sucks. We it's 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 hard to just lose a good player like that, and especially a good player at the three spot because there's just not a lot of those in this league. So it really sucks, and I'm really bummed about it. And so I, what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about uh, some of the things that uh, how it affects the Jazz, uh, what Gordon Hayward is, what Gordon Hayward isn't. Um, the first thing is that the reason this sucks for the Jazz is because Gordon Hayward is a legitimate top twenty player in the NBA. He's a uh, Gordon Hayward is a, f a good shooter, he is a good playmaker, he's a good passer, he's a good finisher, and he's an efficient player. He's just an all-around really good player. Uh, you can plug Gordon Hayward in basically any offense in the NBA, and because of his skill set, he's going to fit in really well. So he's going to fit in well with Boston, you know, and good for Boston, you've got a great player. Like, there's, uh, there's nothing else you can do but congratulate Boston on getting Gordon Hayward. He's great. He's going to help their team win. Um, uh, like I said, Gordon Hayward's an efficient player. Uh, he's gotten more and more efficient each year in the NBA. So by year seven now, he's a player that you know is going to get about 21. He averaged 21 points per game last season, just under 22. Uh, he does it in an efficient fashion. So he goes to the line a lot. You notice, like, my chroma key's not working great, making me look like a ghost here or something. Goes to Hayward behind me, that jersey... But anyways, uh, Gordon Hayward is an efficient player. He's going to, even on nights when he's not having a good shooting night, he still scores in an efficient clip. He'll he'll have more points than shots taken almost every single night because he gets to the line. So one thing Boston fans are going to notice is, is that Gordon Hayward is going to average about 20 to 23 points depending on how many possessions he gets, which is kind of going to be interesting this year with Boston is how many shots he gets compared to Isaiah Thomas. Um but the big question also is, like, Gordon Hayward will score for you guys. So he's going to get to the line about seven, eight times a game. Um, and so if he's having a good shooting night, he's great. He's incredibly efficient. If he has a not-so-great shooting night, he still scores at an efficient clip. He's still getting points for you in an efficient way. Uh, like I said, Gordon Hayward's a great passer. Uh, he can – I don't know if he necessarily runs the point, but he can initiate offense, and he's a good playmaker. So he can run a pick and roll. He finds the open man. The ball moves while Gordon Hayward is on offense, so it goes from side to side. Uh, he finds the right guy. He'll get alley-oops. He'll, he'll find the open man. He's a great passer. Um, and like I said, he fits in a lot of teams. But the thing I wanted to talk about of what Gordon Hayward is, he's also a liar. Gordon Hayward told us uh, that he was making his decision today. Don't tell me that you were making your decision today, Gordon. Don't lie to us. We know that this was made a long time ago. Every single national guy out there told us this is what you were doing, whether it was Amin El Hassan, uh, whether it was uh, the, the local beat writers in Boston. They all seem to know. Uh, just everyone, Zach Lowe, all these guys have heard things from Bartlestein that he was leaving, that, that, or they were hearing it from somebody, but all of them predicted it. All of them said that he was leaving, and they were right. Us in Utah, we all thought that you, we had a chance to keep you. That like if we presented it to you, that if you looked at the situations, uh, with, like with Rudy Gobert, uh, with the, the with the other talent around you, Joe Ingles, we we just signed Joe Ingles to play with you, Gordon Hayward, because he's not only is he a great player, a good player, but he's like one of your best friends on the team. Uh, we have other players around you that are very solid players. We took on Ricky Rubio to play with you because apparently you wanted a playmaking point guard. We even tried to sign George Hill for you, Gordon Hayward, so that you would stick with us. Apparently, he was one that you wanted to have on this team. I don't know if that played into you not uh, signing with the Jazz, but what my gut tells me is that, that that wouldn't have affected anything because you were leaving anyway. You told you said something that wasn't true that makes you a liar. So next time uh, I hear something that you say or I listen to a clip from you, Gordon Hayward, I know that I don't know if that's true. 
because you, what you told us was not true. You said that you were going to go, you were going to listen to everyone, and I think that basically that's not true. You knew where you you knew what you were doing a year ago, because apparently everyone and their dog heard from your agent what you were going to do. So don't tell us that it was a hard decision. Don't tell me this was the hardest decision of your life. It wasn't. You had already made this decision a long time ago. You, this is what you wanted to do, and you led us all along. You led the jazz along until the very last second. And you know what happens because you brought us along? We can't sign Gallinari. We can't sign Otto Porter. We're like looking at Rudy Gay now to just fill your spot because you waited and you lied to us. So enjoy Boston. You could have helped us out a little bit, considering that the Jazz have bent over backwards for you for seven years. For seven years, we bent over for you. And don't act like the first four were all that great either, Gordon. You know why you had to go to Charlotte and Cleveland, the two worst teams in the league at the time? Because you. But don't tell us that you didn't know this. This is what you were doing. This is what you were going to do the whole time. <sighs> Frustrating. Let's talk a little bit about what Gordon isn't. He's not a leader. Don't tell me Gordon Hayward is a leader. We've been, for seven years, the Jazz have tried to get this leadership out of this guy, and he's a loner. He sits in his locker room, and he doesn't talk to the other players. He doesn't talk to other players on the court. He, he mopes. He grumbles. He's not a leader. You know who's a leader? Rudy Gobert's a leader. You know what he does? He leads by example, and he talks to everyone. And when things are hard, he doesn't go off in the corner and mope. And he doesn't complain afterwards either. You're not a leader, and you chose to go to Boston because you're not a leader there because you don't want to be the lead guy. Basically, you're, you decided that you just want to follow someone else. You want to let someone else take the hard shot because guess what? You didn't make the hard shots with us. You know who made the hard shots with us? Joe Johnson. We brought him in to make up for the fact that you couldn't do it, and you didn't want to do it apparently. You want to go to Boston because you want Isaiah Thomas to do it for you, I guess. And apparently you think someone else will come in that can do it for you. Because you couldn't. Took Joe Johnson to win that game when Rudy Gobert went out. And I, so that, that's the other thing. You know what Gordon Hayward isn't? He's not our best player. He wasn't. He never was. You know what you were, Gordon? When we, when we made you the guy, when you were the guy, number one, we were a lottery team. You helped us earn Dante Exum because you couldn't win on your own. You know when we started winning? It wasn't because of you. It's because Rudy Gobert's on this team. All of a sudden, Rudy Gobert starts, and we start becoming a 50-60 win team. I'm half tempted to go look at the, the win-loss record when you don't play, Gordon. My guess is it's not too bad. It's different when Rudy sits, though, and we all know that. We all see the difference when Rudy sits. You know what else? And we've talked about this already. You're not a closer, Gordon. You're just not. You don't have the ability to pack it. You don't have the ability to shoot over the guys. You're not one of those guys. And you're not one of the elite guys in the league. You want so badly to be that guy. You want so badly to be the KD, the Durant. That's not what you are. You wanted your little moment to be just like KD last year. Sure, you're going to be a good player in Boston. You're going to help win. Good for you. You're going to be on the second best team in the East that literally has like three or four teams to even compete. They literally all flocked. There's no Paul George there anymore. There's no Paul Millsap. There's no, they all left. It's just you. So good for you. If you wanted the easy route, this is what you got. And maybe that's what it is. You just wanted it always to be easier. My guess is now at this point, if we had even signed Paul George, you wouldn't have even stayed. Maybe that's what you were waiting for to see if we can get something like that to make it easy for you so that someone else can do the job that you get you can't do that you never did and that's why you left too probably because you know you can't do it obviously no one can beat the warriors right now they're they're amazing but we know that we can't do it with you you proved that last playoffs so enjoy boston enjoy playing lebron but the last thing gordon is the last thing what you aren't is you're not a part of this family you're not Everyone on this team has camaraderie, and we know that you weren't a part of that. You mentioned Jeremy Evans in your, in your, your debacle of a, of a blog post that you wanted to do on the Players' Tribune because you think you're up there with 
Derek Jeter, KD, LeBron. No one in this in this locker room is going to miss you. I know who's not going to miss you is Dante Exum. And he's going to do better now, and he's going to flourish because he gets to play because we don't have to constantly kowtow to your little whining and, and diva stuff. Enjoy, enjoy Boston. You're going to see a point guard who's going to take shots from you. And I guess you'll get your all-star spot because you took the easy route, and there's not that many spots in the East to even take. I mean, it's you and DeMar DeRozan. Enjoy DeMar DeRozan in the locker room over there in the all-stars. But, but you're not a part of this family. You're not, uh, you're not someone that anyone on this team is going to miss. I'm sure that there is a lot of players that are going to come out and let people know exactly how you are in the locker room. Uh, we're not going to miss you. You're going to go to Boston, and you're going to take the easy route, and you're going to win 50 to 60 games in a weak conference. Enjoy that. It's fine. You know, we're honestly, and I like this. This how I end. I'm just disappointed that that you lied to us, Gordon. It, like. The least you could have done is let us know when we had all these people going and helping you out and supporting you. But we did that for you, Gordon. So enjoy Boston. Uh, I'm sure you'll win a lot of games there. You'll make a lot of all-star teams. But you're not going to win the title any more than you did here. Bye.